And the final comment in terms of tolerance is that we, I, I think at least I educate my patients and tell them up front that they will need to kind of be on the lookout for this and guide me as to is this treatment working out for them or not because there are patients who will tolerate the more serious toxicity in a pulsed manner mm -hmm. as opposed to this chronic low-grade toxicity and there are patient populations for whom one works better than the other and that may be another way to personalize which is the right treatment yeah. for whom. That's a great point. So, so Marty, you know, you spoke a little bit about trabectidin too, and I think we can, you know, take a transition to this. George, this is a drug you personally championed, uh, you know, in the United States, and Since Marty was involved in the trials, right? Exactly, it's been a so, research drug longer so than many people what, have been What alive. has been this, uh, this passion, this, uh, explain, talk to so, us a little bit about trabectidin. Trabectidin is a fascinating drug. First of all, it's got a beautiful molecular structure. It comes from a beautiful marine creature, this colonial organism, and was extracted and was shown preclinically back in 1997 or so to have extraordinary activity against many kinds of sarcoma cell lines. Now, we all know that sarcoma cell lines can lie to us. Even if you've got a picomolar, very low sensitivity, it might not work in humans. But then some of our European colleagues tested it, and some of the European patients had some extraordinary responses. Very rare, but what was extraordinary about it is that they lasted years continually taking the drug. So that, I think, is why our whole community has stuck behind this very difficult development plan through um, a long time. And it is actually good to finally walk that particular football over the finish line, uh, or whatever you walk a football over, um, <laughs> to get the points. Uh, the goal line, I guess. <laughs> and to finally have the FDA really say, okay, that's enough data. We believe that this is good for patients. Right. And I think what was interesting about it is that we still don't know exactly what mechanism is responsible for it working in the patients who get, with metastatic disease, four and five years of benefit out of taking this drug. I think just like Mark has said very wisely, it's also all about having rational expectations set up to the patients. This drug is potentially dangerous if you don't have experience with it. And I always counsel outside doctors to be careful with this one. It is a vesicant. It's given by 24-hour continuous infusion. Unless you have great nurses like we have with a lot of experience, it can be difficult to really know how to put it into the ports. It has to be given through a central line, so it's very irritating to the veins. But once a patient gets the hang of it, and if the nurses are good at this, they can come in, get the bag, go home, 24 hours later, come back in, get disconnected, and have a pretty darn good quality of life, especially because we do have these younger patients that are healthy and for whom they'll go out and exercise too much, you know, literally while they're getting the 24-hour infusion. It doesn't have a lot of other side effects in many patients, but it has to be done by somebody with some experience. So I always caution community about that. So, so Marty, I know you have good experience with this drug being involved in the phase three study too. I mean, what are your thoughts? Well, I think that, um, you, you know, it was an, an exciting drug for people to have access to. Um, already the patient community knew about trabectidin. They knew that it was available in Europe, for example, and there, people were really clamoring for access in the U.S. So when the randomized trial um, became available, um, it was exciting to, for me to be able to put patients on the study. For the patients getting trabectidin, I think the experience, uh, like George says, you need to know what you're doing. Um, but already, you know, I work in a center where we're used to using infusion pumps, maybe not so much for sarcoma treatment, but for other cancers. Um, and patients uh, really almost felt empowered mm -hmm. by that ability to be getting drug at home, yeah. um, but also reassured but by coming back the next day to say, oh, I got my drug and I'm s successfully, <laughs> you know, unhooked. Yeah. So there was a real, ex you know, acceptance, yeah. um, acceptance of it. Uh, I do set expectations yeah. that objective response rates yeah. by resist are low, but that disease control rates can be very long.